So our next speaker is seven years old. He's coming from New Delhi. Um, his name is Ranveer Sakshteva. And uh, he's the youngest uh, TEDx speaker at the age of six. He's the youngest speaker this week at AI for Good. And um, he's written a book entitled, Are You Born with AI? Um, the youngest global author of a book on AI. So welcome on stage, Ranveer. And um, you'll tell us how to make sh imagine a world where advanced bionic solutions are not a luxury, but a lifeline available to anyone, anywhere. Welcome on stage. Big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Confused? A keynote that did not end, but starts with a thank you? Well, hold your thoughts right there. I'll bet down to that in just a minute. As most of us here talk and understand the language of AI, allow me to share this. Just like AI, which also encompasses learning and reasoning by analogy, and not just by pattern recognition and pure rationale, I have two commonalities to make you believe why these next 15 minutes or so will be very interesting for you. One, I was born in 2017 and that makes me almost as old as the inception of AI for good. And two, well, seven decades set us apart, I live with the same hope. As Geoffrey Hinton, who was almost as old as the inception of AI, when he recently said, if enough smart people do enough research with enough resources, we will figure out a way to build them so they'll never want to harm us. Hi, I'm Ranveer, and thank you everyone. Yes, each and every one of you for gathering here yet again to ensure that AI remains for good for the future generations. Because I am that generation. Let that sink in. Do not mistake me for a child who's just happy with AI, help, suggesting him his favorite video songs on a platform and more and more of the kind he likes. I'm the one who thinks about what echo chambers can lead to. A global divide on bias where you and I can have completely different endorsed versions of the truth. Do not mistake me for a student who is just happy that AI helps him answer questions using the latest GPT model for the school curriculum. I am the one who is concerned about AI being involved in executing that next cyber attack or scam cloning my voice and images. I am the one who ponders how much intelligence classifies me as intelligent? As I know, super intelligence has a completely different meaning in my generation. And singularity is what my generation may witness where evolving jobs and careers impacted by AI will make each one of my generation rethink their individuality. Apprehensions. Hmm. Innovation in AI is moving at a breakneck speed. As much as that innovation itself is innovating. And that we surround in our world with technologies and algorithms and stacks and models, which are all learning on their own. They're self-innovating, self-generating, 
self-evolving. And this is no sci-fi or Netflix, but an unfettering tech flex. Governance? Hmm. Sitting in that big hall of the United Nations General Assembly, attending the Summit of the Future at New York last year, gave me a fresh perspective. In my one-on-one -on -one interaction with His Excellency, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Sir Antonio Guterres, there were two learnings that have had a very lasting impact on me. One, when His Excellency showed his deep concern by owning that it was his generation who caused all these problems that are now global challenges and that we need SDGs to solve them. And two, when His Excellency wrote in my authored book, Dear and Weed, we count on you for a better world with AI. Yes, this very book. It was a moment that made me feel and will always make me feel that I matter to this world and so does my generation. I can make a change. I can be the change. And so can all my friends in this arena be. The ones participating for good youth challenges and hackathons and more. In paving the way for a better future with AI. A better future with a responsible AI. Or maybe, I should say, better be responsible for a better future with AI. which is trustworthy, unbiased, transparent, secured, and respects data privacy. Ronnie sums it up. He has heard it in the done. But no, wait, I've just seen this side of AI that totally melts my heart. to meet Apple CEO Tim Cook 
when I showed him my coding skills at age five. He was kind enough to invite me to WWDC 23 at Apple HQ, California. At the time, I thought that that was what technology is all about. Some complex code to build apps, softwares and games. Some complex code it still is maybe. But as Steve Jobs said about technology, when you can touch someone's heart, that's limitless. And what we just witnessed in this video is just the same. The only thing that may have changed is that we may have seen a shift from an era of a fusion of technologies and liberal arts to a period of overlap of innovation and governance. AI is already impacting humanity for the good, as we just saw. And this is just one of the many examples of bionic revolutions that AI can revolutionize in accessibility. Let me explain what goes behind these bionic arms and how the terminal devices are controlled with artificial intelligence and machine learning. The prosthesis bionic controller uses multiple sensors or electrodes to gauge incoming electromyographic or EMG signals of the amputee's forearm. EMG signals is nothing but the electric field that is produced on our muscle movement and can vary from a few hundred microvolts to millivolts. A computer varies patterns that are unique to individual movements, say certain specific grips, in this case 18. Complex mathematical algorithms transform and amplify these EMG signals so that the prosthetic arm can translate them into the corresponding movement. These bionic arms usually come with an app that is the main central interface between the user and the control unit. It basically serves as a window into the prosthesis, visualizing the hidden movement patterns in the leather geo limb. The AI in these bionic arms ensures smoother transitions, smoother and more intuitive prosthesis control, higher precision and more grip options. If I have to sum it up in one basic slide to explain the difference between a conventionally controlled bionic arm and an AI enabled powered bionic arm, here it is. In the first case, the conventionally controlled bionic arm uses multiple sensors or, or electrodes to pick incoming electromyographic or EMG signals of contraction and expansion of the muscles. And the limitation here is that to get more gripping positions, we cannot just keep adding the number of electrodes. Since we cannot do that, companies have got state machines which have trigger signals that the user has to give. Say, the user has the option to give a short timber impulse, double impulse, or co-contraction of all the muscles at the same time. On the AI for good side, New bionic arms with pattern recognition and AI enable opens a whole new lot of possibilities for users as it turns things around completely. In this case, the user adapts to the prosthetic arm. Uh, in this case, the user remains the constant and the prosthetic arm adapts. Say, if the user wants to hold an egg or a melon, it is the prosthetic arm that will adapt to those varied signals and movements. And eventually, it will actuate the prosthesis accordingly. And then, AI is no less than a miracle when it comes to varying fields of healthcare. The combinations of EMGs and LLMs and neural interfaces and generative AI has opened new hopes for ALS patients. They can communicate so much better now. Isn't it beautiful? And I can only imagine 
the future of mobility with AI powered exoskeletons which can process vast amount of data in real time to adjust instantly for stability and movement. New algorithms to handle slopes and cells allow the users to, with, data sense, with data from vision sensors to take on their daily lives confidently. All this doesn't only seem fascinating, but very promising to me, especially as it's stressing so many of the UN SDGs. for artificial intelligence. But what I'm curious to know is, can AI stand for accessibility with inclusion? Democratization. Hmm. Maybe this generation can help me out here. As of now, I still need to traverse my journey in learning a lot of other things than just AI. Say, tying my shoelaces better. Oops, spill some beans there. With such bionic solutions and healthcare in place, we need to make sure that it reaches every single human in need, bridging social, economical and digital divides. As we earlier saw in the video, Color, India's first AI-powered bionic arm, makes AI reach this goal of democratization. It aims to be affordable to even an amputee in a remote village of India. And in aerial view, economies of scale and inclusion of government insurance coverages may play an important role in this direction. Amalgamating, I would like to confidently state that my generation is ready for this AI revolution. We commit to be lifelong learners. We have seen the potential of this technology as it has impacted the world in new dimensions since our birth. While most of us here will be looking forward to the impact of agentic AI in quantum computing, my simple thought is, don't overlook us in this race for innovation, as we will be the true agents of change taking quantum leaps. If you realize, we too have seen a lot as well with AI. From hearing my mom and dad asking Alexa for a new place of lullabies at age three, to now hearing all you wonderful minds at a global stage at age seven discussing AI for good. It is not just a start for us in AI. It is built in our natural neural network. Now you know why I title my book. Are you born with AI? Maybe I brought up some topics for discussion today. Maybe I will stone on a lot more of what your generation may be aware of. But I promise you that my generation AI will keep looking for answers for the better of humanity with you and your experiences. Hold us. Join us. Let's say I for good. <laughs>